What's going on everyone? Welcome to this video that is going to be a little bit different of what I typically talk about, right? Digital marketing, digital advertising, etc. Today we're going to be actually talking about complete list of self-employed expenses in tax deduction. So this is a article, an article I want to share from QuickBooks or by made by QuickBooks. And the reason why, right, I want to learn while I'll read you this article, perhaps provide some of my inputs. But quick disclaimer first, right, I'm not a tax expert. I'm not a business coach expert, right? I just still learning, barely starting my process. None of this is as an advice or accounting advice from a professional i'm just going through this article learning and i'm um, making this video hoping that perhaps it helps you right go through through it with me and listen to my point of view and perhaps you can share your point of view as well by uh, putting in the comment section or perhaps right if you want to talk later a one-on-one that'd be great but again i'm not an expert this would be most this will be, will be mainly educational purposes, right? So disclaimer there, I'm not an expert on a tax advisor or anything like that. Go ahead and check with your legal tax, with your CPA, tax advisor, anything that we're going to cover today. Obviously, I'm just going by QuickBooks because this is a well-known company that takes care of accounting and, and many accounting, I believe. And I do use their self-employed um, application. This is not either to promote them or any way or I'm not affiliated to them. Um, and I'm not going to offer you to go and check them out either, right? I would like to offer you to check out my website, www.digitaltrack.co for different digital marketing needs. If you have questions, my information is there. You can go and check it out. So let's go ahead and get started after getting the disclaimer out of the way complete list of self-employed expenses and tax deductions. So reading over here says self-employed professionals face unique challenges. Yes, we do. When tax season comes around and one of the challenges I can share with you that I had is always waiting to the last minute and having to go back, review the whole last year and until that moment, go ahead and find all the different expenses and income that were associated with the business, which it's a nightmare to leave it at the last minute. I'm sure probably you will agree with me if you ever went through that process or if you're still going through that process. That's one of the reasons why I decided to go and find, start utilizing tools. Self-employed, I think I use, I found it for, I know for a $5 a month. And then when I was checking out, it gave me to uh, another offer of saying if you would like to use it for the year we're gonna give it to you for 60 something right so like, yeah okay 60 something sounds good so they just paid it up for the year might as well so i can talk to you about my experience if you want at some point let's go ahead and continue with this but because they don't have tax withheld from their paychecks no we don't as we used to uh if you were ever working for somebody else, like traditional workers, they can use deductions to cover their expenses expenses and lower their tax burden. But when it comes to self-employed tax deductions, the process certainly isn't one size fits all. Deduction, deductible business expenses are those that are seen as ordinary and necessary for conducting businesses or business. These expenses can range from advertising to utilities and everything in between. Remember, however, that you can only deduct the business use of the expense you're deducting. This is relevant for many self-employed professionals. This may include rideshare drivers. I'm assuming they're referring to like Uber or Lyft. Oh yeah, it says right here, such so as Uber or Lyft drivers who claim large mile deductions. Or riders who might take the home office deductions as part of the Quiet refugee from corporate scenes, all right, etc. This business's deduction can also apply to designers, housekeepers, freelancers, consultants, photographers, construction workers, professional 
professionals who works for themselves. The solopreneur, I, I, will, I will add as well, right? Some self-employment tax deductions may not apply to your profession, but you might be surprised by the number that do. When you're ready to file, you'll list the majority of your deductibles in Part 2 of your Schedule C Form 1040. If you click this link, probably it's going to take you to the form. You can also go to the IRS website and find the form as well. It's basically like a table you go and fill out um, the application that I have self-employed from QuickBook. It already <coughs> provides me this information. I already laid out for my tax preparer, which I like. It saved me so much time. Now, throughout the year, I'm going through my uh, different expenses and income, right, for the business as in a weekly basis. And that's just sure it's going to help me a lot at the end of the year of just having the report ready right there. Other thing that I like a lot is that it gives me an indicator quarter by quarter. How am I doing? If I'm doing good in regards to it, it, it well not, not if I'm doing good but it tells me a good indicator if I'm going to own or if I need to pay right it gives me a, a good indicator of the amounts that I need to pay and also the chance to pay well you're supposed to be paying quarter by quarter for what I heard as a business owner <clears throat> but if you're in a position already right you're doing such a great income that you still gonna own. Uh, it, it gives you the flexibility to at least pay in a quarter base, or let you know, right, in a quarter at the end of the quarter that if you need to pay, okay, go ahead and pay in advance, and then uh, the burden will be less. <coughs> if you just do it all at once, if you just went to the end of the year, and perhaps you could take other steps that may take that may help you to uh, reduce. The, what you own in taxes, right? Because you, then you could find other uh, deductibles, expenses. If you have less than 5,000 in claims, you may be able to use Schedule C Easy, which ever you choose, both are due April 15, along with your annual tax return. Okay, but don't wait. For the 2019, don't wait until April 15 or next year to start doing everything, right? Start from today to start keeping a uh, good accountability of your accounting. If not, hire an accountant or use a tool like the one I'm using. I'm sure it's gonna save you, save you from headache if you just wait until the end of the year and just use a spreadsheet. If April 15th falls on a weekend or holiday, it's observed the following Monday. So in case you don't know, April 15 is the deadline for when someone can file the tax before. <coughs> and that doesn't mean you can file the, your tax after. I believe it's just, I believe, don't quote me on this, it's just basically you just get penalties on top of whatever you own, if you owe. Uh, so here's a list of common business expenses that are ordinary and necessary for many self-employed individuals. Note that all of the lines specified are for Schedule C only, with two exceptions noted below. So advertising, I don't know what this is about line. Let me see, maybe that's referring to the form. Let's go and open the form. That's gonna give us a good idea of what they're talking about. <coughs> it's dry over here, so that's why I'm coughing so much. I apologize. I should get some water. Um, so this is just an explanation of the. Oh, here it is. Okay, so it's just this is just an explanation of Schedule C. <coughs> and if we go down, that's where it's gonna get to part two, expenses and advertising. All right, that makes sense. But still, I don't have a visual of what Schedule C looks like. I'm sure. Should we do that? Let's go ahead and try that. So let's go IRS. And then the form is Schedule C, Form 1040. 1040. Schedule C. Sk 
Okay, you'll see form 1040. Let's see what it says. All right, so yeah, you have a visual, right? If you go through this article with me, which I can leave the link below, depending if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or anything, um, if you go through this with me, um, what is referring over here, advertising line eight, is referring to this section part two expenses, and this is line eight, okay? Now, again, if you use a tool like self-employed, this is gonna be done for you um, already. Um, Basically, the application will have categories you can select. And so that's going to put in a format where it's going to be easy for your tax preparer to read it. Or if you prepare your taxes yourself to put in a format that could be easy to understand. So, all right, advertising line eight. It says over here, deductible expenses are any materials for marketing your business. Uh, for example, flyers, signage, ads, branded promo items, events, and trade shows and the cost of developing those. So if you own too, if you think you can owe too much on taxes, why give it to Uncle Sam? Perhaps you could talk to me, right, for some uh, online advertising advice or actually uh, online advertising expenses. Just saying. So non-deductible deductible expenses, uh, office holidays, parties, for example, books that are not branded. Use other expenses. I don't know what it says, non-deductible. But I'm interested to see this keyword right here. If I use something that is not branded, then it's non-deductible. What, what if then I brand it? Would that mean that Branded promo items. So guys, there you go. If you want to deduct something, right, a gift for your clients or something, all you need to do is put your logo in it, and that will make it deductible for what it says over here. Blink QuickBook is that's not true. Uh, again, check with the the state where you are, the city where you are, the county, right. Check all that because uh, laws change it um, in different places. So. This is just a general guidance. Still, you got to check with your local tax preparer or accountant. Oh, certified public accountant, CPA. So, next one is business insurance. I don't, I'm not familiar with this. I don't use it. Uh, I think I should, but um, you probably do. So, go through this, right? Something that is deductible, it says, is insurance intended to protect your business from fire, theft, fluff. Blood, property, malpractice, errors and omission, general liability, malpractice, worker, compositions, um, health insurance, auto insurance, anything like that is not deductible. I will suggest you to, this is what my experience is, I, I serve on the board for the Solano Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and one of the experiences that we, that I learned from it is that if you're looking for insurance, look for insurance broker that is specialized, uh, commercial specialized, well, business specialized, right? And if you can find even more specialized for each type of this, right? Fire, theft, flow of property, malpractice, errors, that can educate you more about, about perhaps what we may need or what my, you, you may need um, for any of these specific topics right here. Uh, that could be even better. So we can start with somebody specializes in business insurance in general and if we need any more specialized insurance we should be able to we should look for that person that is actually specialized in one specific insurance because it all depends right on the type of um, business you do by the way one way to get started on no learn see what type of insurance you may need is a website called if you're in California, call gold, I believe it's called. Um, and you select your city or county and then put your business type and that's gonna give you a list of licenses you might need to get, 
uh, and different permits from your city, state, county, within the California, and insurance as well. So that's a good resource. That's a state uh, managed website. So car expenses, line nine. The business portion of your actual car expenses, for example, gas, insurance, registration, repairs, and maintenance, or public transit expenses like buses, right? If you use local transportation, those are tax deductible. <clears throat> Non-tax deductible expenses are expenses other than parking and tolls if you use the standard mileage rate. I don't understand this. I guess we're out. I do the app does have a mileage rate, um, a, a, a mileage tracking tool that um, um, that perhaps I, I don't know what it means, what other parking expenses, but it says over here, right? Things that you can deduct are things like gas, insurance, registration, repairs, right? Depending on the, I believe is depending on the percentage that you use the car. So if you use that specific vehicle only for uh, business purposes, then it's easy to uh, deduct that. Obviously, everything you're gonna do for that car, every maintenance, every gas you put, uh, insurance, everything, every payment you do in regards to that, it will be for uh, as a tax deduction. Depreciation in section 179. Depreciation expenses on business assets, such as computers, office equipment, tools, furniture, cars, all those are depreciate, uh, deductibles as depreciation of expenses on business. Something I didn't deduct, didn't think about deducting. It was the computer depreciation. Okay, good to know. Uh, tools. Well, my car could be a tools. Furniture. Definitely, I do have furniture that is depreciating, so I should take that into consideration. Note, the IRS requires you to use Form 4562 to claim this deduction. Okay, that sounds like more work. I'm not sure if the application is something that I can use. Is the application I can use that? Car depreciation is, so not deductible. Car depreciation if using the standard mileage rate. So car depreciation can only be included as in the tax deductions if you are using the standard mileage rate so again this is referring to the application has a mileage tracking feature that it lets you um, track every trip and then you tell the application if that trip was for business or personal purpose and basically you know once you choose and select business if it was business it's just gonna keep it's just keeping track of all that and and continue to add it up for you automatically for tax deductions. Home office deduction. Expenses related to a home office. So if you didn't know, it says right here, right? You can, it uh, having a home office is tax deductible. Um, business portion of rent, utilities, repairs, insurance, mortgage interest. You need to fill out form 888 to unless you use the simplified method. Now, that's, I'm not familiar with that simplified method. Again, that's something perhaps you should consult with your CPA or tax preparer. Uh, but you can deduct um, expenses related to home office according to this. What cannot be deducted? Expenses if you are use, if you use simplified method, okay? It includes all home office expenses. So meals. Meals, uh, what are tax deductible? Which ones are tax deductibles? Meals that you had with a client and during which you engage in business discussion or those incur while traveling on an out-of-town business trip. I think that's very straightforward. Uh, what is not included in self-deductions? Meal for yourself, on uh, lunch breaks, for example, right? Dues for athletic clubs. So I guess that's the main difference. Um, if you are out of town, that is, could be deducted. Uh, if you eat by yourself. If you are in town, right, close to your home uh, or a place you live, and you eat by yourself, that cannot be deducted. But if you have 
eating with somebody else. That could be um, a C as a client meeting. Um, so that, that meal could be deducted. Good to know. All right. Office expenses. So office expenses can be deducted, right? Cleaning services for office, general office maintenance that don't have a separate category. So what cannot be deducted related to office expenses? Home office costs, use home office, okay? Rent, use rent, utilities, okay? Supplies, uh, any supplies that you use and replace. For example, cleaning supplies, if you clean homes, okay? Office supplies like pants, okay? Hold coal bag, that's pretty straightforward. What cannot be deducted? Office decorations and some other office expenses. All right, that makes sense. So travel, travel costs related to business trip. That makes sense. Lodging, airfare, or rental cars, local transportation. The travel must be overnight away from your residence and primarily for businesses. Personal costs while traveling, dinner with a friend, meals, what traveling, use meal, that cannot be deducted. Um, so talk to your CPA on this one. See what's, what other uh, suggestion he have in reference to deducting travel, right? Um, but here's very straightforward. However, um, you may want to, again, uh, check with your CPA tax preparer to see if there's anything else that can be done um, that uh, even though you use, you go to a family vacation, what else can be done in reference to have the deducts for taxes? And I'm not saying that's something that can be done. Ask if that's something that can be done or not, right? I'm not the expert here. I'm just giving an idea and a thought. Would that be possible? I'm just asking, right? Other expenses. Any other business expenses that are ordinary and necessary, such as education to improve skills. Yeah, that's great, right? Like workshops that perhaps may need to go. I know tax preparer has to go to um, uh, recertification every year or, or learn what's coming up every year. So that could be an example. So anything that is helps you improve your skills for the job you do, Banking fees, associated dues, association dues, business gift, industry magazines. Okay, all that makes sense about other what you should include as other expenses that are tax deductible. But what is not tax deductible? Expenses with their own separate category, expenses that are ordinary and necessary. All right, that doesn't tell us much. All right, so this is another section here. It says less common business expenses for the self employed. You might encounter some of these business expenses in your line of work, but they're generally less common. Okay, let's see what it is. Commissions and fees. I do use this one, right, as part as a member of Chamber of Commerce. So if you belong to any networking event, I believe those are tax deductible. But let's say what it says here. Commission fees paid to non-employees to generate revenue. Oh, great. So if I have a sales agent, right? Um, the commissions that you pay to them are tax deductible. Good to know. Many companies such as Uber, Airbnb, remove their cut before paying you. So don't include those. Okay. So if you're more like an affiliate, that um, may need to may not need to be included. Non-deductible expenses, city license fees, use taxes, licenses, oh, okay. Commissions paid to employees, I thought licenses could be deducted, but I'm seeing there that not. Commissions paid to employees, such as wages, so um, wages cannot be deducted. All right, uh, contact labor, any payments made to independent contractors, contracted web developers, so okay. Uh, makes sense, right? If I'm, I, if I have a business related to flooring company, and I need somebody, to, I I don't know how to develop a website. I can go and hire somebody. So okay, that's I consider it contract labor. That makes sense. So that website is if you need it, right? 
is something that you put in back into your business as a improvement on business and at the same time uh, that is something you can use for tax deductions good to know so again same situation right if you see that you are gonna pay too much have some room to spend some money uh, this is some of the things that are good to read to know okay what can I reinvest the money of the business that could be tax deductible and at the same time right that is gonna help the business wages paid so what's not tax deductible related to contract labor so wages paid to employees all right use wages lawyer professional fees okay those cannot be instead use legal services all right so depletion oh commissions paid to employees okay so commissions paid to a non-employee sorry i'm going back to this one commissions and fee commissions paid fees paid to non-employees to generate revenue i guess that could be like an affiliate and somebody that gives you referrals uh, sounds like it could be good uh, to ask a cpa more about that this one so it says over here right for city licenses instead of using commissions and fee use taxes licenses okay so i understand this kind of give you a guidance on what the proper um line items that you should use right so commissions paid to employees you should be using wages um wages paid to employees you should be using wages law professional fees use legal services instead uh depletion if you're in the business of mining natural resources oil wells natural okay um i'm gonna skip that one i'm not sure my audience will have employee benefits program Costs related to benefits you provide your employees, your own health retirement. So I'm going to skip that one as well. I'm not sure where you are in your business, but I'm going to just read quickly through those. Employee wages, wages paid to employees are deducted, can be deducted, right? Like salaries, commissions, bonuses. What cannot be deducted? Employee benefits, use employee benefits, okay? And payments to yourself. Interest, mortgage. So interest paid on mortgage for property use for business other than your primary home. So that's the key right there, right? If you are looking to deduct mortgages from taxes for tax deduction, uh, it says over here, interest paid on mortgage for property use for business other than your primary home. So that's the key. You may receive form 1098A from the lender if you pay mortgage interest during the year what cannot be deducted interest on primary home use home office deductions for that piece in those instances interest car other okay other type of interest such as credit cards business line of credit interest on car payments so all those can be deducted you can only write off the portion related to business not the portion related to personal use so you're going to have to calculate right what portion is being to credit cards a portion of the business etc and what i like about this self employ is that it lets you split so you can kind of calculate there how many how much of a credit card space has been in business on the personal if you can itemize that although i will recommend you for same sake for your own sanity to keep it separated right check it account have one for personal, one for business, saving accounts, one for personal, one for business, credit cards, have one for personal, one for business. It's easy to keep track of. <clears throat> and at the beginning, I understand, right? I'm, I'm in there in that situation that in the beginning, we had to find a way to fund it, the business. And so that were, that's where, you know, there's not enough money, obviously, to use a bank account or business credit card perhaps but if you do have a personal business personal credit card uh, and you need to do those expenses yes that's reasonable right it makes sense you still haven't built any cash flow on your business so you may need to use cash flow on your personal and that makes sense and again tools like this one can help you 
separate that or just keep that in mind, right? Re reading this type of stuff, keep that in mind that you can go ahead and do it yourself as well manually. You don't need a tool. It's just basically getting in the habit to actually do it manually and obviously it takes more time. So legal professional services, professional fees related to your business can be deducted like attorney, tax preparers, accountant, other professional. Also oh, good to know, right? Um, the person that can actually know what all this is about, I can pay them and actually be a tax deduction. So that's good. Because this is not my expertise, although as a business owner, it's been important to educate myself, myself on this because I, way I can ask the tax preparer or accountant good questions, right? I want to make sure that at least those tax preparer knows way more than I do. So uh, I can set a standard, definitely, definitely. Services provided by your employees, okay? Pension plans, so contributions you make to your employees, retirement plans like 401k, cut plans, profit sharing plans, all those can be tax deducted. Contributions made to your own plan, <coughs> that's not tax deductible. It's the, instead, it says use form 1040, line 28. So then we have rent and leases for like vehicles and equipment, okay? Rent or leases for other business properties, repairs and maintenance, repair and maintenance on business machines, equipment, or offices, repainting office, for example, uh, repainting offices, fixing computer, laptops, replacing warm parts and equipment, all those can be tax deductible. <clears throat> what is not included here is car related repairs because then you can use car expenses, significant improvements, you use uh, depreciation. Tax and licenses, so value, various business taxes you share, of FICA, such as you share of FICA if you have an employee, or licenses such as state or local licenses or licenses required for your business type. Those are can be included for tax deductions. What cannot be included are self-employment tax, incomes tax. See section below. Utilities, utilities related to your office. All right, health insurance deductions. You can deduct the cost of your personal health insurance premiums as self-employed personal person as long as you meet certain criteria. It says, okay, this is very important, especially if you are a solopreneur. You know, it's just you and your business, a sole proprietor. Your business is claiming a profit, so your business has to make money at the end of the year, okay? If your business claims a loss for the tax year, you cannot claim this deduction. So you have to be positive cash flow in your order. Well, yeah, positive cash flow or have a, a profit. All right, in order for you to be able to deduct this. Another criteria is you were not eligible to enroll in an employer's health plan. This also includes your spouse plan. If you were eligible to enroll in one of and chose not to, you cannot claim this deduction. That makes sense. And also, you can only claim premiums paid for the months when you were not eligible for employer's health, all right? So if you uh, and your spouse are not, do not have any employer's health plan, both of you are working in separate business or in the same business, obviously you have no employee, right, that could, uh, uh, enroll you into the health plan so this could apply to you if you were profitable right because um you it's not that you chose it you you, you don't have a choice you have to find a plan for or not that you don't have a choice in regards to um having an employer right you actually have to go get your own let's see over here self-employed contributions act Tax deductions. If you're a traditional employee, your Federal Insurance Contributions Act tax burden, known as FIC, FICA. All right, you can go ahead and read that yourself. Hopefully that, uh, I hope that I brought you some information. I know it was kind of a long article, but I learned a lot today. And I hope I was able to share with you and you were able to learn with me as well. Uh, I'm not an expert, so I hope I can at least this is give you information to see what things to look for and go and ask your CPA or professional tax preparer um, for your own business, right? Every business is different 
every and depending on the location where you are as well. Again, my name is Leo. And if you have questions related to digital marketing, you may go to my website, www.digitaltrack.co. You'll find information there how to connect with me. All right. Have a good one. Bye.